Hi, it's Lee. Welcome to another Learn English with Lee grammar video. And welcome to the first video looking at the topic of relative clauses, which is a very important area of grammar from about B1 intermediate and upwards. Of course, it's important for your general English because you'll sound more natural, like a native, but it's really important for exam English. For example, if you want to do very well on IELTS. Okay, but before we go into the meaning and the form of relative clauses, I want to introduce you to my brother. His name is Leon. He is 27 years old. His job is entrepreneur. He's a, a businessman. He lives in New York in a very nice apartment and his girlfriend is from Russia. So if I wanted to describe him and introduce him to you, I could say my brother lives in New York. My brother is 27 years old. But why use two sentences when I can use one? And I could just say my brother, who is 27 years old, lives in New York. So what have we done here? We've taken two sentences and we've put them together in one sentence. So now what we have is one sentence, but we have two clauses. We have our primary clause, our main clause, and we also have a secondary clause, or what we call in this example, the relative clause. But before we go on, let's just refresh our memory a little bit about what a clause is. A clause is a part of a sentence which has a tensed verb. So a subject and a verb and usually, but not always, an object. So if we look at our example with our relative clause, if we look at the main clause, what is the subject? Okay, so the subject is my brother. And what is the verb? What is the main verb? The main verb is lives. And then the object is, or the adverbial phrase, is in New York. This is the main clause. So what about the relative clause? What is the subject of the relative clause? Yeah, it's who. So it's the same as my brother. It's talking about my brother but we're repeating it because it's a new clause. It's the relative clause. And what's the verb? Yep, the verb is to be, and the object is his age, 27 years old. But why? What have we, what, what have we done this for? Okay, of course, putting two sentences in one sentence sounds more natural and sounds more fluent, but what is the actual function of the relative clause? If you look at it, so my brother, who is 27 years old, lives in New York. I'm giving you extra information about my brother. I can do it with just my brother lives in New York, but I also want to tell you how old he is, that he's younger than me, that he lives in New York, that he's doing uh, very well with his job. So the relative clause is like an adjective because it's giving you more information about the noun, about my brother. And in this case, this extra information is not essential, it's not necessary. It's interesting information, but it's not essential information. So this type of relative clause is something we call a non-defining relative clause. And you can usually recognize it by the commas. However, the other type of clause, a defining relative clause, gets a little bit complicated. So actually I've made another video which looks at the difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses in more detail. So please make sure you watch that video as well. Okay, so we have our sentence. My brother, who is 27 years old, lives in New York. And we looked at the subject, the verb, and the complement for each of the two clauses. But if you notice, the subject in the relative clause, who, is not a question word. Yeah, we said who refers to my brother, right? So it's like when we repeat a name in a sentence, we substitute it for a pronoun, right? So usually the pronouns are, you know, he, she, we, they, it. 
but here I'm using who as a pronoun. So it's a pronoun in a relative clause. So who is a category of grammar that we call a relative pronoun. Okay, so let's look in a bit more detail at relative pronouns. Are you ready? Good. Okay, so in English we actually have five relative pronouns. Who, whom, whose, uh, which, and that. Now then, some books will tell you, and some teachers will tell you, that there are more relative pronouns than these. Uh, that will say, for example, where, when, why, how, are also relative pronouns. This is not exactly true. We use these words in relative clauses, but they are not relative pronouns. They will be relative adverbs. Whew, okay, that's getting a bit grammar heavy. So again, I've made another video looking at relative adverbs. But for now, we're just going to focus on five relative pronouns. Who, whom, whose, which, and that. Okay, so what's the difference? When do we use who? When do we use whom? When do we use which? What's the difference? Well, you can guess that who we use when we're talking about a person. So in my example, my brother, who is 27 years old, we're talking about my brother. My brother is a person. So we use who when we're talking, when the relative pronoun is referring to a person. However, whom is also used to refer to a person in a relative, um, relative clause. So what's the difference between who and whom as a relative clause? Well, the difference is grammatical. We use who to refer to the subject of the relative clause. In our relative clause, who is 27 years old, who is in the subject position. However, whom is used to refer to a person in the grammatical object position. Okay, Lee, what does that mean? Yeah, we need to use a different example for me to show you what this means. So if I say, my brother lives in New York, okay, I just introduced my brother to you, okay, and I put these two sentences together to create a new sentence, and I say, my brother, whom I just introduced, lives in New York. We have the same main clause, my brother lives in New York, but now we have a new relative clause, whom I just introduced. Okay, so what is the subject of this relative clause? Is it whom, referring to my brother, or is it I, referring to me? Well, in this relative clause, I am the subject. The verb is introduced, and whom refers to my brother is actually the object. If you remember the two sentence example, I just introduced him. Him is my brother, but for some reason, when we have a relative clause, we shift the object to, to the beginning. So it's whom, my brother, I just introduced. So in this sentence, my brother is referred to as the, is, my brother is referred to using whom, because in this example sentence, my brother is the object of the sentence and I am the subject. Ah, uh, Lee, I still don't get that. That's a lot of grammar talk. Yeah, I know. To be honest, usually when I teach the difference between who and whom to my students, I don't explain all of that. That's the full explanation, but to be honest, the easiest way to know if you need who or whom is if there is another person after the relative pronoun, so for example, whom I just introduced, you know that the relative pronoun is the object. So if it's a person, refer to it using whom. Okay, and what about whose? Well, whose, like a similar function as a question word, it's a possessive. So it's talking about a person, but it's possessive. So uh, a new example here would be, uh, my brother's name is Leon. He lives in New York. So putting the two sentences together would be my brother, 
whose name is Leon lives in New York. So the name is the possession of my brother. Okay, so that's who, whom, and whose. Okay, seems quite easy. So what about which and that? Okay, well, let's look at an example with which. If I say, yeah, my brother is an entrepreneur, he's a self-employed businessman, he's doing very well, uh, his apartment in New York is huge. So I could say, my brother's apartment, which is huge, is in New York. So looking at the relative clause, we can see that which is in the subject position, but is it referring to a person or a thing? Yeah, it's referring to a thing. So we use which when we are using a relative pronoun to refer to a thing. Okay, so we've done who, whom, so people, whose, person, but possessive, something belonging to a person, and which, which is things. So what about that? Do you think it's going to be about people or about things? Well, the answer is it's actually both. So for example, I could say my brother that is 27 years old lives in New York. That's talking about a person. Or I could say my brother's apartment that is in New York is huge and I'm referring to a thing. So that seems easy, right? Whew, we can use it for people or things. However, if you notice in these last two examples, I didn't use any commas. So these are our examples of defining relative clauses. So we can use that for people or things, but we can't use that in a non-defining relative clause. And the non-defining relative clause is the one with the commas that we've been looking at in this video. So for more information on how to use that and about the difference between a defining and a non-defining relative clause, we need to go to the next video. Okay, so I hope that has been a helpful introduction to the world of relative pronouns. Again, relative pronouns is one area of relative clauses, which is a much bigger topic. And to be honest, it's a very important topic, which you cannot avoid, you must study, you must produce, if you want your English to go above intermediate level. So if you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer all of your questions. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.